Okay, so now that I've finished my rant about the camera calibration tab and why I think it should be one of the first things visited as opposed to one of the last things visited, let's move on. Let's start to work through our images, see what all these bells and whistles and sliders and loops are all about, and hopefully what we'll do is by the time we're finished, we'll end up with a really great workflow that's smooth, easy, and elegant. So now the first thing that we kind of need to talk about is something called white balance. Just because our camera was set at a certain thing doesn't mean we have to stick with that. And one of the great things about working with a raw file is if I was last shooting inside a, as an example, a classroom that had fluorescent lighting going on, and if I had my white balance on my camera set to fluorescent lighting, and then I went outside and started shooting, and then realized at some point later on, probably back when I'm back in the computer, realized that I had the wrong white balance option chosen in the camera, I can now come in and I can choose any one of these guys to set things right. By default, when we first open up our images, the white balance is always going to be as shot. In other words, whatever your camera setting was. If you remember to do that, that's great, that's fantastic. And I believe that my white balance was set for daylight. And this image was shot during daylight. The only thing is it was shot as the sun was setting down. So there possibly should be a little more warmth applied to this. I'm not 100% sure which way we want to go, but we may want to alter that. So what I would like you to do is just come in and try these different options to see. Now, I don't know if the Kelvin degrees means anything to you, but now in the auto, I just went up to 7,500. If I go to the ad shot, I'm down at 5,150. So now if we go to daylight, and daylight is 5,500, and 5,500, and the as shot, all right? So now I'm thinking maybe the 5,500 is a little bit warmer and coming closer to what I really, really want, and all that kind of stuff. I can go into cloudy, which is going to make it warmer, 6,500. If I go into shade, it's going to go up to 7,500. Mm -hmm. And that was what auto gave me as well. Uh, I think that's a little bit warm, but who knows? All right, I can go into tungsten, but that's nowhere near where I want to be. And the same thing with fluorescent. Not a th no, no. And then flash. Flash is kind of interesting. It's the same as daylight, except there's no tint involved. 5,500, zero tint, whereas daylight is 5,500 with a little bit of warmth put in. Why the difference? Because flash is factory created daylight. That's why. All right. Anyways, anytime you move these sliders away from the default drop down menu, such as this, now we're into custom. All right. All right. So we can choose any one of these guys to help us come up with what we believe is an appropriate color temperature, white balancing, overall look of our image. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll choose as shot and then we'll do, mm -hmm, maybe we need to warm that up a little bit. And maybe we need to take this down or bring this up and put this at at least zero, do a little bit of that, a little bit of this. If you're not quite sure, what you want to choose and all that kind of stuff. But if you happen to have something in your image that is theoretically neutral, theoretically neutral means there's no extra reds or greens or blues in that. Theoretical neutral is a shade of gray. As we can see that we have dark gray over here, but I'm not 100% sure. There's gray cement there, pretty darn close. Life experiences will tell me that that's more than likely a neutral gray when it was actually applied to the outside of the building, as well as this down here, and more than likely these big fans over there. So what I could do is I can come up to the top here, and I can come over here and click on the eyedropper tool. Unlike Photoshop, this is a white balance tool. And what this will allow me to do is to click somewhere in my image, and I'll be able to set red, green, and blues to be all equal. So if I put my cursor over here, I want you to take a look at the RGB values that you see here. There you go, 175. 205, 255. There's more blue than there is green, and there's more green than there is red, and that makes sense because I have my cursor in a blue thing. If I come over here, you can see that I'm lacking blue, and I have more red and green, and it shows it's a creamy yellow color. All right, so there we go. So now if I come over here, we can see that I have 
my cursor in a gray area and I'm darn close to 140, well, depend if I can keep my hand still, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So if I was to come over here and click that, then theoretically I have now set this to be 5200 minus three. Is that what I wanna have? Well, at least it's a starting point and I know that that has gone neutral. And if this was whole, this whole scene was being lit by something neutral, then that would be a good you know, place to choose and a right thing to do. In this case, not so much because the sun was setting. We know that there is something called the golden hour, and that is when either the sun is rising or the sun is lowering itself. What I need to do now is I need to warm this up. So I'm not 100% sure how much I need to warm it up, but I'm just going to bring it up a little bit and say maybe 6,000 and set this to zero. So there we go, we've got that going on. That kind of works well for me. Every time I do this image, I come up with something a little bit different. So it's totally up to you, how you want to interpret it, but at least using the eyedropper tool, clicking on something neutral, we scientifically neutralized it. Doesn't mean it's aesthetically pleasing, so then we play with our temperature and our tint to get it to look close to what we envisioned when we clicked the shutter.